morning, everyone. Welcome to the um, RSS Club. Today, we're going back to the beginning. We go to the meeting schedule. Um, at the very beginning of all of our videos, the second, sorry, the third video we have is about how to set up your computer um, uh, for using um, RCD and CyberDoc um, and a few other things. Uh, this video was a two hour long video. Um, um, and so today uh, we have Svilana here um, and her she just got a new computer basically. Um, and so we're gonna use her computer to demonstrate how to do all these things. Now, um, in addition to the notes that we have here for, for Mac, there were also a few notes for um, uh, for Windows. Um, now, some of these notes, they're a little bit outdated, but some of the links still work. Um, and so the purpose of today is to, to install um, what we need to connect to JHPC from a Mac computer, as well as what we need for having R and a few other things. So we'll try to use uh, as much as we can existing documentation for it. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is on the Mac notes, line 23 here has a link for CyberDoc. Um, so we're gonna download that. Um, um, download the version for Mac. Um, and since CyberDoc, there's a few other software options, like some people use Fizilla, um, um, and I forget what else, but um, um, the idea is that uh, CyberDoc is one app that allows you to have like a graphical user interface when you're interacting with like um, a remote server, such as the cluster. Um, so, um, um, so we're here, this little zip file. Um, so we need to drag it to um, your applications directory. Um, so there's a little zip file, we uncompress it, then we drag and drop CyberDoc into the applications. Once we've done that, we can double click um, Mac is like, are you sure you want to open it? You downloaded this from the web? I'll say yes. Um, so now that we've opened it, let's go to bookmarks and create a new bookmark. And so here we're going to use SFTP to log in. Um, and the server name is going to, is going to be jhpc 03jhsph for Johns Hopkins School of Public Health.edu. Port is 22. We need your username, Svitlana, for the cluster. So give them the favors. Um, cool. And so we'll, as a label, we'll call it just JHPC. To be precise, JHPC 03. Um, cool. Um, and so we go to the notes for Mac setup. That's basically the information that was available on line 19. Since then, um, it's no longer JHPC 01, we have to use JHPC 03. So let's log into it. And it's gonna ask for uh, our uh, cluster password, um, which is Lana is typing for us. And, um, and it's gonna ask for a verification code. So at this point, Svilana has set up the Google Authenticator app um, to be able to get codes, logging codes. And so on her phone, she's opening it um, and then finding the six digit code um, that we can use to log in. Ooh, we had a typo, I guess, on the password for the code. This is um, normally can happen. We'll need a new code. Do they use? Expire. Yeah, they expire it. after a few seconds. Um, so on the Google Authenticator app, there uh, uh, there's a little like blue ticker on the on the right side. Cool. So at this point, we've logged in um, to the cluster, um, and so uh, as you saw, it's annoying to have to type your password and have the Google Authenticator app all the time. 
So we're going to set up something called SSH keys. So there's a um, link over here on the current um, JHPC documentation website, which if you go to the JHPC documentation website, you can find from knowledge base authentication SSH um, key pair. Now, we know that the website is going to get updated soon. So uh, if you were looking at this video a few months from now, um, the actual link might be a bit different. And so then here it says, like, OK, let's create your SSH key. An SSH key is going to have two sets of files. One that's going to be like your private file, another one that is called like the public file. Um, these two files basically say like uh, how you look, right? Or in this case, how does this computer look? Um, and then another file is like a painting of you. And if the two of them match, then uh, then you're allowed to log in. Um, and so we'll use this command over here. Mac that comes with a terminal application already. And so we can um, copy paste this already onto the terminal, and it should work. And it's going to say, like, hey, I'm going to create this new file called id underscore rsa. Is that OK? Um, and we'll say yes. And by to say yes, we'll just press Enter. And then it says, like, do you want a passphrase? Normally, I don't put passphrases. So I want to say press Enter again. We get. Um, uh, and now we have like an ID RSA and an ID RSA pub. Uh, boom. So now that we have those files on our computer, um, we need to actually copy the public file. This is kind of like the painting of you um, um, into, um, into a special file on the cluster called authorized keys that lives on your hidden SSH directory. So here they provide a command for doing that. Uh, what we're going to do also is just do like open sage ID RSA pub. Uh, let me open it. Mm. Let's spot the typo. So we'll do it the, the, with the command line way. Um, uh, I'm just going to delete the file. Um, uh, and so we'll paste all of this come actually let me um yeah. i yeah i i don't i can't really help because i always use ssh dash copy dash id instead of this mm. and and then you 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 ha don't have to do all this copying stuff but i i don't know if um that keyword it, that um function is uh, available for Mac? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. I'll just try this. The instructions are a bit updated, I guess, from the website. OK, we'll need now your your JSPC password. Uh, enter. And then we'll need the code from your phone. So if we refresh here, now we do have, we see that like by using that command, um, uh, we did copy the file. Um, um, okay, and now we can log in without typing the password uh, on the terminal. So it did work. I guess I had some typo there. Um, cool. So now we need to go to, back to Cyberdoc to our bookmarks. And we'll go to uh, toggle bookmarks over here at the top. And I want to right click on it uh, so I can edit the bookmark. Um, and that's because we have now an SSH key file. So this is like saying like who I am, right? The, the file we just copied to the cluster is like the painting of who you are. But this is the actual like full description of who you are. Um, so we'll put that and uh, label. We didn't like labels. Um, maybe it's because they have. Right. It didn't like the label, but in any case, we uh, have now this um, key file there. 
And so let's say we want to log into it again. Mm, why did it work? Why did it break? Which mm -hmm. refuse. Maybe we got blocked out. <laughs> um, Being able to log in. Okay. Right. Apparently, we got blocked out. From we'll we'll need to contact HPC admins. <laughs> um. Okay. Right. This is a bit annoying for the purpose of the video, but uh, we'll continue ahead. Um. Um. Uh, so, in theory, all of that should work now. Um. Uh, what's happening on the chat? Oh, thanks, KG. So, um, um, now on a terminal, uh, we don't want to have to type all of this all the time. So, um, we'll go into the SSH directory um, and we can create a file called config there. Um, um, so here, like, I'm opening that config file. Um, and uh, what I want to put on it, oh, is it closer? Um, is this type of information. So that way we don't need to type it all over the time. So we'll um, put here our uh, username, um, the ID for the cluster. Now, um, uh, you can have one or more um, shortcut names for it. So a lot of times we just call it J for JHPC. Um, uh, some people I think have called this new one J3 uh, just because to differentiate the host name. Um, and so with that, uh, let's just make sure it has an empty line at the end, save it, close it. Um, so we like look at what it has, right? We have that information. And so that means that if we open a new terminal, we could just type SSHJ and we'll try to log in. So the cluster right now we're getting blocked. Uh, uh, so that's a bit annoying. Uh, uh, that. So um, at that point we have like a, an easy connection to the cluster. We just did this commands over here of line 14 to 21. Um, but now let's uh, set up R for our computer. So for that, we're going to uh, Google search CRAN, um, uh, which is where um, R is distributed. And we'll find here the download R for Mac. Um, and so now, do you have an M1 Mac? M2, M3? You don't know. All right. So let's go about this Mac. Um, M2. Where do you see that? Oh, yeah, Eight. chip. Um, so it is an M2 Mac. So it's a new, uh, like, uh, there's two types of Macs. Um, some of them have chips that Apple makes itself, which are the M1, M2, or M3, M3 chips. And um, older Macs were uh, sold with Intel chips. Um, and so there's, they're different in a few ways. And so we need to download this, the exact version for our R. So we're going to download this one over here that says for Apple M1 to M3 Macs. Um, um, uh, um, so it does a little uh, peak, uh, it does it downloads a little installer. I'm just going to install it like with the default options. Um, we, we just need your computer password at this point uh, to enable that. Long <laughs> now that we have R, we can move this to the trash. Um, uh, we can now, do you have Salva? Um, now we can install R Studio. It was me, sorry. <laughs> um, so, oh, it's cookies. Um, uh, 
we're going to download the RStudio desktop version. Um, download RStudio. And it says here first you need to install R, which we already did. Then you can download RStudio. Um, so that's uh, downloading in the background over here. Um, um, so it was done. Now that it has finished, we can now drag our student to the applications folder. Um, um, it'll take a minute or so. Um, and so, um, um, once we have that, we can now um, um, start installing a few other things maybe we'll need for our computer. Um, and so if we go to uh, the team documentation website, um, there's a few things about our setup um, on the chapter 17. Um, in particular, I have um, some information that I use on Mac computers. So uh, I follow some information from this page from the CRAN um, that says like, hey, uh, we need to have the Xcode developer installed. So I'll copy this command and put it on a terminal window. Uh, so we'll need your, your computer password there. And then press enter at the end. Cool. And then it says like, hey, do you want to install these things? We'll say, eh, I love the window. We'll say yes. Um, so this just um, installs a few things that makes the terminal um, actually like a, a little bit more complete um, in terms of uh, being able to do a few things with it. Um, uh, in the meantime, I'm going to download also this um, uh, Fortran compiler. Um, so this is a bit more advanced than just what a regular R user would need, but like a lot of you probably are going to maybe need this if you're going to be compiling packages from scratch. And so yesterday I was trying to help, um, I think, um, Ryan on a few of these things. Um, um, so now that we have the Xcode developer tools installed, we can also install this uh, software. Again, we need the, the computer password. Can you email uh, Bit Support in the meantime and ask them to unlock yeah. SVAC? Uh, we'll see if they can uh, they can unlock it. So command line is installing. Um, we also installed our studio. Our studio now is on our applications. Um, um, it's almost done, I guess. Um, so. Um, uh, Let's open our studio in the meantime. It says like, hey, do you really want to open this? You download it from the web? We'll say yes. We do trust that we downloaded the right version of our studio. So we have R over here. Um, our studio is um, what's called an interactive development environment. Um, so it's basically like um, a GUI version that has a few all the things you they think you need for for um, coding with R. And so one of the things it has is uh, it has um, uh, a terminal window. Um, and there, we can now use our commands for logging into the cluster. Oh, actually, now it, it did work. That's working, OK. Mm -hmm. All right, there were seven failed logins since the last successful login. <laughs> so maybe like we just need to wait a little bit. Yeah. Right, so now we can log into the cluster um, and um, uh, I guess you haven't run the S run command. Right. Um, let's see if uh, separate log works. No, it's not working. Right. Um, uh, we'll try to fix that maybe at a later time. Um, so um, one of the things our studio can do is um, what's a, a 
what is all the syntax for it? <laughs> I always do auto complete it too, but I'll try. So there's like the dash dash PTY is one of them. Um, I mean, there's dash dash X11 if we need that, which probably we don't. Yeah. Uh, you can do dash dash mem if you need to specify that. Just, the defaults are probably okay. Oh, then bash at the end. Um, okay. That should be good. Then I just want to like um, basically a basic um, um, session where we can like um, where we can load R on the on the cluster. Um, open R on the cluster. Um, and then we have like a little new um, R script. We can say things like, um, 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 let me find the actual command. Um, things like this, where we install, uh, we have like some code in our computer and if you press Al command enter on a Mac or Al control enter on a Windows computer, we can execute code that we have on our computer on the terminal Windows. At this point, we're like interacting from our computer with R on the cluster, um, uh, uh, which is pretty nice. We could also like run this command in our own computers. Uh, but in this case, we don't have the remote package installed. So we need to install it. Uh, it's installed in the cluster, but not in our computer, in our brand new computer. Uh, um, um, so um, uh, now that uh, uh, the command lines have been installed, um, this is also a bit on the advanced side, and we have the the Fortran install. I typically also install all the binaries that we need um, for R on a on a on a um, for installing any R packages. Um, that way, like I won't be surprised in the future. And so what I'll do is on a terminal on an open R with uh, pseudo powers. That means that we have like admin powers. So um, we need your, our computer password to authenticate at that point. And now we have uh, a special version of R where like, I can copy these commands. And this will install uh, a bunch of tools that are needed if we need to compile any R packages from scratch. Um, uh, and so this is like the, like the full like, um, advanced setup. Um, but at this point, like, uh, if you do it from the beginning, you're going to avoid headaches down the road. Um, uh, when you get errors like, oh, I don't have a Fortran compiler, or I don't have this or that, and you're like, wait, what was that? Um, so if you just install it from the beginning, now now you have all, the, all these tools. Now, something else uh, that we probably need is called XQuartz. Um, and so um, this is going to be useful um, to, um, if you make a plot on the cluster, and you want to be able to, to see it on your computer without having to use like CyberDoc or something like that to open it. Um, um, we're going to install this software called Xports. Uh, yeah, computer password, yeah. Yep. Um, 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 and so we'll, we'll demonstrate how this works in a, in a second once it's, uh, finish, finishes installing. Um, so, um, on the cluster, I'm just going to exit uh, from the cluster. All right. So now that we have export installed, um, uh, uh, I don't know why it 
did that. Um, oh, he wants to log out and log in uh, from your computer. No, that's okay. mm, no let's avoid that. Because <laughs> we need to like... It's a Zoom thing. Yeah, it's a Zoom thing. Um, so, I'm gonna, let's see if it works without having to log out and log in. Um, so under utilities, here's where we have export. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, it doesn't want me to log out. Um, you want to save your presentation? Sorry. Sure. Since we had a log out, um, uh, I need to resume uh, some of these things from the R setup. Um, so can you, can you type your computer password? Um, so I had to accidentally cancel this. Um, so we'll let that run on the background. Um, okay, so uh, let's look into the cluster here on the terminal window. Um, and let's request um, uh, let's request uh, uh, a session where we have X11 enabled. Uh, then let's load uh, R on the cluster. And then let's make a little plot. So now that we have Xcort installed and active on our computer, um, 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 since we made a little plot, uh, we can see here it opened Xcorts on the top left corner, and that's allowing us to see the plot from the cluster. We can resize it, we can do a few different things with the plot. Um, so this is pretty nice if you're working interactively and you don't want to have to save the plot to a PDF file and like use Cyberdoc or some other tool to like, um, open the PDF file. Um, so that's pretty, that comes pretty handy. Um, and um, uh, um, uh, and like another reason why we uh, created that SSH config file was that um, on it, we could specify um, uh, lines 20 and 21, which enable us to always use X11, basically. Um, so we don't need to remember to type those, those, uh, those options. Now, um, um, something that uh, can be quite useful um, on the cluster is to um, um, have this file called input RC which is gonna modify the behavior of the up and down arrow. Um, um, so let's just do this manually. Ideally, I would be using um, Cyberdog, but um, we'll just create the file, copy paste this stuff. Uh, um, and the other thing we need to do is have a bash or C file. Um, and so under the documentation website at JSPC files, um, I just created this input RC. That's what uh, we just did right now. And uh, we have this like long bash RC. Um, um, uh, so I'm gonna copy all of it. Um, um, we need to update this bash RC at some point uh, with a few things, but overall this is gonna work. So let's copy it uh, and then it, it edit the default bash RC file. Um, so let's delete all this stuff. 
there's probably a faster way of deleting a, a bunch of lines. Uh, but I'm not a BI user, um, like a very basic BI user. So let's just paste all of that. Uh, so let's just look at how it, how it looks. Um, Um, and so we won't we won't go over every single line here, but the idea is now that if we log into the cluster, now we can use it. If I type S R, I'll use the up arrow, and it should search the last command that started with S R, which is S R. Right. And so this is something that Nick and I were just mentioning how we always use the autocomplete to find commands, and so that's why we couldn't remember. Um, this command, yeah. uh, with, uh, all that syntax. It's a pretty long command. Um, um, and so that will be a bit of, of a boost to you to your productivity uh, when working with the terminal. Um, so now we have um, okay. We did download everything we need for R. Uh, we have R Studio set up. Um, I mean. We have our studio installed. Actually, let's let's finish the configuration for our studio. Um, 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 there's a few default options that um, I always change. Um, um, so um, one of them. And there's we we have um, we've discussed this in um, in some uh, videos that we have, um, but one of them is like we do not want to restore any R data, and we never want to save it. Um, um, uh, we don't necessarily need to save the history. I normally turn that off too. Um, then on code uh, for saving. I always use uh, LF, which is a line ending that is like universal across different machines, the Windows um, one. Um, this is particularly important if you're using Windows, because otherwise your files cannot be read that easily by other machines. Um, um, then I do like to highlight the R function calls and the rainbow parentheses. Um, there's a few other things that I do, which is like having four tabs instead of two. Um, um, uh, and I do not auto indent, and I do not vertically align. I do like to soft wrap. Um, um, so those are a few of the options there. We, he we see here that we have Git, um, and it does find your SSH key already. Um, 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 now, uh, we could probably like also configure your um, SSH key for GitHub um, using the same key that we use for JSPC. Um, 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 that way you don't have to type your password when you're logging into Git. Um, 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 so that, I mean, there's always like more configuration you can do, um, um, but that's around. Um, the main things. If you go to the to the website, the documentation website under our setup, uh, there's a subsection called our packages. And this is you want to install a bunch of the R packages that um, I use, for example. I won't do this uh, on SVLANA's computer because I don't think she needs all of these things for now, right? Um, and there's also some R configuration files, like if you want to have an R profile, which configures, for example, um, um, actually, we'll, we'll do this one a, l a little bit of it, um, which configures how your R session is um, set up. So I'm going to install a package called um, uh, use this. Um, and then we'll, using that package, we'll edit the R profile. Um, um, and so I'm going to copy 
a few lines of code here for changing colors. Um, let's, make, let's leave it as that for now, just changing the colors. Um, so we go to session, we restart R, and we have an error. I'll show up in red, um, which makes it easier, a lot easier to detect. Uh, whereas on uh, native R, um, here we had an R session. Um, it just sh will show up in, in bold. And so sometimes that is easy to find, whereas now that we open R, uh, now we get it in red, right? So it makes a few things that are easy. Um, make your life a little bit easier as an R program. So with that, um, let me just give it another try to the CyberDoc stuff. I don't know why this is um, uh, being a bit more finicky. All right. We got everything to work again. And that's because uh, we go to um, uh, your applications directory on their uh, utilities, you're going to find something called keychain access. So we open that on the login over here. I mean, it's going to ask for your password, et cetera. Um, let me, I guess, let me do it again. Uh, well, right now is remembering that we have your password. Um, so you go to login, you search for JHPC. There were two items there. Um, the video doesn't show them anymore because I already deleted them. Um, and so you select those two items and, and you can delete them. Um, if you do that, then um, on CyberDoc, when you're making your bookmark, uh, now the password is actually empty. Like there's nothing there. So it's actually using now the uh, data that we wanted. Uh, so we'll call this like JSPC zero tree. Um, 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 so now we can log in. Um, and so let's say um, that in Svidlana's case, um, um, something, a place at JHPC that maybe she wants to access a lot is uh, uh, this directory where there's a lot of files from the Liber, sorry, the uh, Martinovich, Maynard, and uh, Page groups. Um, and so here we could also make it a new bookmark. Um, and we'll just call this um, ECSO4 farm page. Um, and you can see here, like under the more options, it's showing the exact path at JHPC. Um, and so this can be useful to have like multiple bookmarks for it. One of them is like if you want to access stuff on your home directory, the other one is like you actually want to already go to probably where we have a lot of files um, for different projects. Um, so we got it to work, um, but it was a bit challenging, this CyberDoc thing, the keychain. Um, so yeah, okay, that's the end of the video now. See you, bye.